Hey YouTube, it's been a couple of weeks since the last one vlog went up as I've been kind of busy with uh, paperwork and taxes and renewing forms and all this stuff and uh, probably going to be a bit, a bit busy again for a while because doing things like tax paperwork has a nasty habit of uh, showing up things that are at issue and need to be dealt with so there's some things that I need to do there but uh, during those last couple of weeks, sorry I've moved the camera as you may notice so I might be cap you screen is there and camera's there now so uh, I don't know why I keep that's because I'm moving on the camera and just movement eyes what I've been doing in the last couple of weeks I haven't done an awful lot of wombling per se but I went to being started going to car boot sales at uh, there's a local car boot sale quite a large one uh, Pix Cottage uh, overlooks the reservoirs very nice uh, one of the larger ones this is quite good the uh, first week was uh, pretty decent I found a few nice things found a nice old battery charger which I put somewhere ah yeah there um yeah uh, fuse is missing I thought oh, I'll fix that uh, unfortunately it turns out to not work at all so but that's the peril the perils of going to boot sales you often find stuff that just doesn't work. I um, kind of tend to get together a little to make a small inverter and a small lead acid pack and so wander around, plug things in and annoy the sellers. Um, you know, but um, what else did I find? What else did I find? I got that the first week and some other things. Yes, I got some drills. I got a bunch of drills, uh, cheap battery ones, more gearboxes to dismantle, as you've seen my previous video with dismantling them for gears. They all look about the right size, so I'm tear those down. The chucks are unfortunately rusted on in most of the cases, so I don't know. I'm going to have to try tearing it right down and heat it up to see if it will come off without... Otherwise I'll have to cut it off to get the gearbox open. But um, yeah, rather nice. Uh, there should be, be some more metal gears to make up some more full metal gear sets uh, for doing robotics with. Uh, because this is pretty much the robotics thing this time because I've got, got four of those since then I've acquired another two which is quite nice that'll make up a good lot one of them is actually a Ryobi uh, drill but it's uh, I think I've got rid of the casing but uh, you can tell from the guts there it had a lot of um, I have no idea what it is like caulking compound or so on it was coated thicker than that on every surface it's just uh. but yeah should we get some nice bits from that uh, something else I've been doing, I was trying to work at the hack space to tidy things up a bit, so... Since we moved there, there has been an area by the members boxes, maybe if you remember you can get a storage box to keep your stuff in, so you don't have to drag it in and out all the time. But, um... There was an area that since we moved to the new place, which had been like unclaimed items from the move, they had no uh, specific uh, owner. And the idea was, you know, just leave it there and people will pick up their stuff, like, oh, it's over there, you just go through that, go find your, find your bits. But it's been sitting there for since we moved in, it's been a few months now, and it's like... It's there's new stuff appearing in this pile. That's basically it. It's basically being used as a junk pile for people to go through. And while we already have, we that's a lovely idea. We already have one. We have it upstairs. It's called the three weeks system, where if you have something you want to recycle, you don't. You think it's a bit too good to throw out, but you know you have no use for it at all. Really, you just put it in the three week box every week. It moves down one box until it finally goes in the bins outside. And it's a lovely idea, but we don't need one for each floor. So I took photographs, of everything, tried to get a rough list of what I saw on hand. And said, you know, if you find, if you see something here, please take it, please put it away. Uh, in a week's time, it's going to go in the bin. It's going to go either go in the bin or the three week system. But um, I did mention that there's a policy at the space that if something is left around, it's not, it's not, belongs, doesn't belong to the space, it's not equipment, and it doesn't have label on it, it's basically fair game. You know, if someone's like, oh, I can't give up on this, leave it on a table, walk out, that's fair game. You either go in the three week bin, you can take it, you can put it in the bin, whatever you like. So it's very important the spaces you make sure you leave a name and some sort of details on it otherwise your stuff is going to go aw awry but um i mentioned on the list that there was a couple of items there i had a, my particular eye on i was like yeah okay. once i've raised the awareness that this place is going to be cleared out then people are going to bumble through it and take bits because you know it's like oh we've got some spare bits they're going to go in the bin and I said, like, okay, I've taken a couple of bits. I'm not going to say what they are because the real owner will know what they are that has gone. And only the real owner, I mean, anyone else would be like, oh, someone's taken some stuff from there. You know, it doesn't matter if, if X is missing because they presumably the correct owner has taken it. But um, I want to be honest about this because I felt there were quite nice things. But um, no owner came forward, no one noticed. The box it didn't move, it was rubbish. But what I got out for one of the boxes, completely unlabeled, completely was uh, two robots. Two robots. 
And uh, we got one here. It's the borderline robot for some people. But it's one of those robotic uh, tape loading systems, you know, uh, tape archives. And the idea is that uh, this thing's got a little barcode scanner on it up here, and that scans the side of a tape drive, of a tape, uh, pulls it across, and then it will move up and down this rail and turn this around to 90 degrees and pop it out the front of the thing so you can collect it. Um, oh, am I going to a drive? I'm not quite sure. Uh, this is an HP uh, drobby, I can't remember the model, I think it's a Sure Store, but it's the main, main robotic guts of it, and it's quite interesting because it's got a some very nice little motors on this. Very nice. Let me look at those. They're lovely, lovely gear trains, and there's another two there, and the separate module with that, and nice bit of oh, uh, chain there, uh, wire chain there. That's very nice. That's some good bits. The rail is quite cute. It's actually got a, a sort of turntable arrangement on it here, so you actually have tapes stacked down either side of the uh, carriage. So and this motor here will drive this round so it can turn to face this way, or turn to face that way, or turn to face forward, so it turns the whole bit, whole section of track. You see the track is actually segmented. So the whole section, if I turn this by hand, turn this by hand, the whole thing turns. It's got some nice little alignment uh, ball bearings at the ends to make sure it all gets on line. It's actually got an interlock, mechanical interlock, on this wheel here, this wheel here you might have seen, yeah, you can see. It's actually got a uh, pin there, I, yeah, it's a solenoid driven pin which pops in and out of the holes on this uh, helical gear uh, to stop it from moving around on this uh, section of track when it's used. Uh, so you can go back all that depth, and it's, it's painfully similar uh, sort of design, you know, double sort of knife edge arrangement to, to the maker size stuff, but it's nowhere near the same. It'd be nice if you could imagine that. On a huge rack of parts, so you can just call out the parts you want from your parts bins. You don't have to have them on your desk anymore. And uh, that's a lovely idea, but um, we'll see if we can do something about that. If I can get a bit more maker slide or something. But uh, yeah, like that. And it's covered in bits of aluminium though, and there, it's all it's all sort of like um, glass reinforced plastic. This, but then there's yeah, there's bits of aluminium embedded in all the surfaces, all the internal surfaces and around the outside. And, I have a terrible suspicion that whoever it was who salvaged this uh, didn't actually unscrew it from the case, they just chopped the case up maybe with an angle grinder around it, so breaking the aluminium up with high speed, high uh, temperature particles of aluminium embed themselves in the surface and that's the only reasonable solution I think, so they're, they're quite, they're not, they're not haven't melted right in, but they have splattered into all, every nook and cranny of the surface, so you've got to scrape them off, they will come off, but yeah, you can see, you can see how how it's gone, but yeah, that was a uh, robot number one. That one's probably going to be destined as some very nice parts for a few precision precision items I might come up with. The other one is a um, little less impressive. Which one? These little robot arm kits. Uh, I've seen these on eBay. I've considered buying them for one. I'm kind of glad I didn't. Not just because I've obviously one for free now because someone didn't want it. Um, but it's also much smaller than I imagined. I mean, you look at that. It's pretty tiny, and it's only got a, a carrying weight of about 100 grams. I've got another arm up there, which I'll, I'll, I've still got to do a sort of tear down compare on, really, I want to do. But uh, yeah, it's lovely. It's very lightweight, though. That's the main thing. And it's about the right size to go on a. I've got a four wheel drive uh, road control car chassis up there. And uh, I'm thinking that will fit nicely on the front. So I'm going to fit a little webcam up there. And maybe drive it by remote at the hack space, you know. Let's see if I can't make it in of an evening. I can always uh, leave it uh, in a member's space to charge up and just let it drive around bothering people, which would be quite cute. So, those are the two robotics items, and obviously, the uh, various drawn motors, they're gonna, the gearboxes are going to be uh, repurposed for robotics. Um, less useful for robotics are what I got this weekend. Um, one of which, some nice new t shirts, 50p each. As they only had one size and in three sort of tan and dark green colours, so they weren't selling too well. My dad came along afterwards because uh, he supports a school in Gambia and he's always looking for like uh, cheap drawing equipment, so, like new pencils and stuff. And we saw t shirts going 50p each, like yeah, having all of them and bought the entire stock. But um, what I found another shop, another place was a bloke selling uh, clock mechanisms. And the whole ones were quite nice ones actually, like multiple chimes, you know, with, with uh, alarms on and so on, all, all mechanical. Uh, there was one box though that had one that was all just broken parts, and there's probably actually parts from a couple of different clocks in it. 
and I just gave him four quid for the for the whole contents of the thing. So I've got a lot of very nice. I mean, look at the gears. That's actually the uh, spring barrel there. No spring in that one, but uh, some lovely chunky brass on those and. Those are going to go towards the business, and I'm going to get some castings of those and try and make some replica gears because I get offended at the idea of people who are obsessively steampunks and worshipping of a, you know, a simpler time where things are more beautiful, taking things that are simpler and more beautiful and breaking them up so they can pull the gears out and glue them to hats. So I'm going to make some replica gears there with the brass powder and so on, and that will all come up on my work blog, which is my other channel, which you should check out, which is Starborn Works with an E. Um, what was that it? You know, I think it was. It wasn't very much. I've got a lot of mangoes, though. The mangoes were nice. Box of 12 mangoes, £2.50. And they're gorgeous. I keep them in the fridge. It's very hot weather at the moment. As everyone in the country is moaning about. It's currently 26.7 degrees in here, according to the thermometer, which is right next to the camera. And, yeah, keep a mango in the fridge. It's gorgeous. It really is. Okay. That's my advice. Oh, no, no. There was one thing. The other thing I got from the one last weekend with these. I almost forgot about them. They're uh, from halogen lighting uh, units. I've not seen them do, done like this before. I'm used to the ones, that, uh, the cheaper ones, which are I use for the, my secondary lights here. As you can see, I'm blotting out. Um, you know, the ones have this little switch mode power supply and just bump it down to, or knock it down to 12 volts or so for maybe 70 watts or less of the lighting. Uh, each one of these, though, I, I, I saw them like, there's there got to be a reason they're that shape. And the idea is you've got a, some sort of mounting uh, bolt there, I presume, and you've got oh, there's some of the remains. Uh, mains wire goes in one side, loops through. They're, they're basically individual transformers for individual lights, which is a bit of a waste of materials, but the shape of them is quite nice. I mean, these ones are very... Oh, they're they're in, Intram Barwell Limited, Type Number PT035, Maximum VA rating 35 VA, so resistive load be 35 watts. Uh, fuse rating 250 milliamps. Uh, T, is that a slow blow? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, primary voltage 240, secondary voltage 12 volts. And that means, I've checked into that each one of these has a uh, mains to 12 volt AC um, toroidal transformer. So that both of them, I've got two lovely little toroidal transformers, which is very nice. They're very. I, I, you know, toroidal transformers are lovely things. And uh, I'm thinking I might uh, use these in an audio amplifier, like one for each channel. That should be good. Uh, I'm only looking into that. No, no set plans. I'm sure there's some audio files out there. If they watch that, be like, yeah, that's not going to work. You're, you're wrong voltage, wrong idea, wrong what? I don't know. But um, looking into it, and it seemed like a, a worth a punt for four quid for the two of them. So that's not too bad. And we say worst case, I end up replacing the lighting in here with them because the, actually these fluorescent tubes do my eyes in. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, oh, oh yes, I uh, mentioned the steppers that arrive. That's more a business thing. Uh, that's just gathering parts to, for the hopeful, hopefully going to make a 3D printer. Uh, did get that for a quid at the same boot sale, actually. It's just a, one of those draft excludes for letterboxes. Uh, I was intending to make an entirely enclosed 3D printer, so one of these to feed the uh, board and cable in, which would feed the filament. Seemed like a great idea. It's about the right, about the right width. Uh, so yeah, well, hopefully that will uh, turn out something good and all. Alright, I shall leave you there, and uh, have a good week. I will hopefully get back to you with some more videos soon, uh, once I've got a few other things sorted out, because obviously priorities. Alright, ta-ra!